Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers and ladies this morning. Glad you're here with us in this time of worship. Just a few announcements to call your attention to. Um, this right after worship today, teen praise group will be rehearsing here in the sanctuary. Uh, Saturday, uh, just a reminder, is Muriel Shaw's memorial service will be at 11 o'clock here at the church on Saturday. And then next uh, Sunday is part two, or there's a, um, a forum, part two of Proof of Heaven. will be at 1130 here in the sanctuary as well. I'd like to read, with this being Mother's Day, read from you a few excerpts from a little, little book called God Gave Me a Mommy. Here's a day in the life of a mother. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm goes off and a mother's bound out of bed to tend to her children. Wah, wah, wah. A child cries and a mother com comes to comfort. Ha, ha, ha. A child says or does something unexpected and a mother enjoys a moment of laughter. Whir, whir, whir. The microwave cooks and a mother feeds her children. Churn, churn, churn. And guess what that one is? A washer runs and a mother keeps her family's clothes clean. No, no, no. Child gets into tr trouble and a mother keeps her family safe. Go, go, go. There are places t to be and people to see and a mother is on the move for, for her family. Pray, pray, pray. There's much to ponder day by day and a mother goes to God. So we thank you mothers for all the prayers that you've kept your families and children out of tr or in good care that way. I'd like to share just a few from the same booklet um, some uh, things that children wrote about their moms, prayers they wrote. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for a loving, caring mom that's always helping me and doing things for me. Thank you so much for my mom. Amen. God gave me a mommy, so I have someone that's always there for me. Dear God, bless my mommy and the things she does. Bless her for making us safe by keeping food in our stomachs and clothes on our back and also a roof over our head. My mommy makes me laugh when she sings. I love all the cool stuff my mommy does. God gave me a mommy to help me through the year. Let's see. I love the way my mommy takes care of me and I like her, I like her eyes. My mommy makes me laugh when she smiles. I love when my mom sings part of a song she made up. It goes like this, today's my birthday, I can cry if I want to. I, I admit I sometimes cover my ears. My mom like, makes me laugh when she jokes with my dad. Let's see, there's one more here. My mom helps me. Dear God, thanks for my mom. She helps me through, through boy problems. And my mom makes me laugh when she tries to act my age. My mom gave me, God gave me a mommy to yell at me sometimes. <laughs> My mama makes me laugh when she, choos, when she chases dad around the house. So, special memories from children, so I hope your kids can share some memories they have as well. So, or at least the ladies, happy Mother's Day. It's uh, a bittersweet morning for me. As chairman of the SPRC, Sometimes uh, we have to make some very difficult decisions, and uh, one of those decisions was made recently. First of all, who's the most recent mother in the room? <laughs> Come on up, Evie. Well, you know, Evie has been uh, has been the bedrock of our youth and children's programs at church for 12 years. As we listened to about uh, mothers nurturing their children, Evie has nurtured our children and youth over those 12 years, and no one could have done it better. But as a result of budgetary issues, student enrollment, we were preparing with Evie to cut back to maybe half time because of our, our budget problems and budget challenges. And Evie did a wonderful thing. She went home and talked to AJ about this. And they decided that Evie wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. So that she
she could nurse and nurture Becca. So, Abby, we love you so much. Mm. You've been such a special, special person in this church. We want to wish you well. We want to pray for Abby together. Yeah. I think Abby wants to say something first, too. Nice. And I'll let Abby talk first, and then we'll have a prayer for Abby. Uh, for my family, this was an easy decision to make, but it's been one of the hardest decisions I've ever made to say goodbye to all of you. Um, this hasn't been just a job for me, it's been my life. I am so blessed that I got to be able to come here and do God's work and ministry with all of you. And I just wanna thank you so much for all the love and support you've given me for 12 years. When there were times in my own personal life that didn't go well, I could always come here and you were my safe sanctuary. So thank you so much for being that for me. And I love all of you. So we're going to have Abby kneel down at the, at the rail, and uh, we're going to pray over her, and you're all welcome to come and lay hands on Abby. Anyone who would like to come up and lay hands on not the hair but shoulders, you can do so. Can you kneel or? Or do you want to stand with the baby? Or? Okay. Okay. May not be enough room here. You guys just touch the hem of the garment. <laughs> Lord, we pray for Evie this morning. We give you thanks for all that she's given of herself to this congregation and working with the children and the youth and their families. And not just there, her work and, and love and Influence is extended to every person in this church, and we give you thanks for the 12 years of her dedication here. Lord, there's so much uh, that, that she's done that um, we won't even know or, or know the impact that she's made. And, and we thank you for her giving of herself to you and, and serving you faithfully all those years. Lord, as she's made this decision to uh, devote her, her time to, to Becca and raising her and influencing her as a mother and her growth, raising her in, in faith and you. We pray for her. We pray for AJ. We pray for Becca and their family life as they grow, that they would know your blessing. Lord, we pray that they would know that she would know her, the ways, the token of our love as we try to share with her how much we appreciate her, how much we love her and care for her and our blessings and wishes as she goes forward in, in her family life. So thank you for her, and thank you for the special part of this church she has been for so many years. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture reading is from John, chapter 10, verse 22 to 30. It was now winter. And Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. He was in the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Colonnade. The people surrounded him and asked, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have already told you and you don't believe me. The proof is the work I do in my father's name. 
but you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch from them the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The choir this morning is singing a new anthem, and we'd like to dedicate it to all women who are mothers and who acted as mothers to children, and who have carried our burdens and when we have needed to be carried, and who has comforted us. And the choir would like to sing this anthem now.
Thank you, choir. Jill, that was beautiful. And Janet, you're playing this wonderful day. As any day, not just today. Our lives are filled with numbers. Almost a month ago, we all had the privilege of participating in this joyous annual event. I'll call your, uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'll refresh your memory. I'm sure it was, it's always my uh, favorite time of the year. Every year, we file our income taxes. <laughs> and when doing so, we fill, deal with pages upon pages of numbers. Our earned numbers, spent numbers, invested numbers, saved numbers. Then when you re uh, file your return, it's prepared, you send it off to the Internal Revenue Service with your Social Security number on it. The IRS takes all of those numbers, puts them into a computer along with the numbers of thousands and thousands of other people. To them, we become a number. The government knows us by our tax number. The state knows us by our driver's license number. The bank knows us by our account number. Sometimes we may wonder if anyone knows us at all without a number. But that's the significance of today's scripture reading from John 10. John tells us God knows us, and God doesn't need a number. God knows us instant, in, intimately, in fact, better than we know ourselves. And that's important to remember. The words of John 10 communicate to us a truth that our hearts long to hear. The psalmist of Psalm 23 put it even more clearly when he wrote, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In today's scripture, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. They follow me, and I give them eternal life. There was a new revolutionary airplane that was making its first flight, and the passengers on the plane were reporters and journalists that were going to cover the story of this first flight. Shortly after takeoff, voice came over the speaker saying, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be your pilot today on this plane's historic first flight. And I can tell you the flight is going well. Nevertheless, I have to tell you there's a minor inconvenience that's occurred. Don't you like to hear that on a plane? <laughs> Passengers who are sitting on the right, if you look out that side of the plane, you, out your window, you can see the closest engine is slightly vibrating, just a little. But that shouldn't worry you, because this plane is equipped with four engines and we are flying along smoothly at an acceptable altitude. As long as you're looking out the right side, you might as well look at the other engine there on that side, and you'll notice it's glowing, or more precisely, it's burning. And that shouldn't worry you either, since the plane's designed to fly with just two engines if necessary, and we are maintaining an, an acceptable altitude and speed. As long as we're looking out the plane, those of you on the left side, if you notice out your window that there was an engine that was supposed to be there, it's missing. It fell off 10 minutes ago. And let me tell you, we are amazed this plane is doing so well without it. However, I would like to call your attention to something a little more serious. Along the center aisle of the plane, there's a crack that's appeared. And some of you can look through the crack, crack and see the even, notice the waves of the Atlantic below. In fact, if you have very good eyesight, you may notice a small lifeboat that was thrown from the plane. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to, I'm sure you'll be happy to know, the captain is keeping an eye on the progress of this plane from that lifeboat below. <laughs> in life, we sometimes find ourselves in situations similar to that flight. Everything around us can be falling apart, and the person in charge seems as remote as the captain in a lifeboat in the ocean below. But the good news this morning is we are known by God, and we are loved by God. When God knows us and loves us, God will not abandon us. In spite of all the violence and suffering and death in the world, our own failures and encounters with suffering, God wants us to know that God cares about us. God wants us to know God loves us with an everlasting love, and he calls us by name. And that's the promise that's made with us from, God has made with us from the beginning of time, and Jesus makes with us today. I know my own, and my own know me. To God and Jesus, we are more than a number. In the midst of an uncertain world and faced with unknown dangers, we are known by God, and we are loved by God. 
Even the hairs on your head are numbered. God knows me a lot better than some of you by that statement. Jesus once said, God is greater than anything that can threaten us in life. The death and resurrection of Jesus assures us of that. And Jesus' words in today's scripture reminds us of that once again. We need that reminder for there are all kinds of things in life that threaten us. Accidents happen. Disease or disaster comes our way. Sickness strikes. Disease stalks us. Conflict threatens our unity. We know that danger and death are a part of life. But the good news for us this morning is that whatever happens to us, it's not nearly as important as what happens in us. For God is greater than any danger we can face. That's why these words of Jesus are so important. He says, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. They follow me, and I give them eternal life. Many years ago, the great preacher and pastor of Riverside Church in New York City, Harry Emerson Fosdick, told a story of a teenage girl who was stricken with polio. And as he visited with her, she told him of a conversation she had had with one of her friends. And that friend said, affliction does color life. And the young girl agreed, but she said, I will choose what color. At her young age, she had already discovered one of life's great secrets. It's not what happens to you that matters as much as what happens in you. Faith in God does not necessarily shield us from danger and death and the evils of this world as much as it gives us the power to withstand and overcome those things, to stay strong in the midst of them. Christian writer Corian Tim Boom tells, or nearly died during the World War II concentration camp. And in one of her writings, she recounts a conversation she had had. Someone had asked her why God would let them suffer so much if God were truly a loving and caring God. And Corey replied, there are many things I don't understand and I cannot explain to you. But if you knew the Lord the way I know him, you wouldn't ask why. You'd be satisfied to know God is good and God loves us. Corey knew that God was greater than the evil that surrounded them in that concentration camp. And because God was greater, somehow she knew God would see them through. There's a story in the Bible of Jesus and the disciples in a fishing boat on the Sea of Galilee, and a storm arose. And the waves were crashing against the boat. The wind was howling. The boat was rocking and filling with water. And it was beginning to sink. Through all of this, Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat. Finally, the disciples went and woke him, asking, Master, do you not care that we are about to die? You and I have been like the, with those disciples. We've seen storm clouds rise. We felt the wind howl and the waves beat down on us. It may be the death of a loved one. It may be the battle with a disease or a fight with cancer. It could be the loss of a job or some other financial struggle. Maybe it's a broken relationship or time when your child didn't come home on time and you were worried crazy about them. We've all been there, and we've asked that question the disciples did. Master, don't you care? That's why John's message is so important. Jesus' words remind us he does care. I know my own, and my own know me. That's the secret in handling life's storms. Life can be tough at times. Disease and danger and disaster and death and conflict, they're all part of life. But God is greater than all of these, and God's love is empowering. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Hearing is believing, and believing is following. Hearing the voice of Jesus means trusting God is greater than all that comes at us. It means listening to Jesus and following him. There's a missionary named Herd Schaefer who told the story of a 13-year-old Chinese girl who continued with her family to worship God secretly back during the Cultural Revolution in China when religion was forbidden and worship was banned by their, the Chinese rulers. One evening, the Red Guard burst into their home and threatened them for worshiping Jesus. They had a small altar with a crude cross in one corner of the room and determined to put a stop to their worship and command complete allegiance to the communist state, the Red Guard lieutenant demanded that they spit on the cross. 
and they refused at first. Then the lieutenant became indignant and shouted at them, saying, unless they spit on that cross, they would all be killed. Finally, the elder in the group came forward, he spat on the cross, and he left. And then one by one, the other members of the family did the same, until there was only the 13-year-old girl left in the room. She refused to do what everyone else had done. She said, I cannot and I will not. She told the lieutenant about her faith and that she was willing to die for it. The lieutenant seemed pleased. This kind of devotion is what we want for the new China, he said. People who will commit themselves so totally they're willing to die for what they believe. But he wanted that devotion directed toward Chairman Mao, not to Jesus. He said, we will change you. And then he left. She was spared, but she never saw the others of her family again. And the story doesn't end there. Later, she escaped to Hong Kong, and she later went to a Lutheran seminary and became a pastor in the Hong Kong Lutheran Church, serving several people, the needs of several people. And she was praying for the day that she would one day be allowed to return to her village and minister to her people, even to that Red Guard lieutenant who spared her but murdered her family. She was able to endure, to overcome that tragedy in her life because she knew the Good Shepherd. She had heard God's voice, and she knew that God was greater. God's greater, and our commitment to God can give us the strength to endure all things. We may not be able to be spared from the storms that rage outside of us, but with a strong captain at the helm of our ship, with the shepherd to lead us, his voice to heed and, uh, and his voice to hear and follow, we can calm the storms within us. If we allow God to transform those storms within us, storms of anger, storms of doubt, storms of frustration, of despair and hopelessness, then we will be able to lessen those storms or the power of those storms that are raging outside of us. It's not what happens to us as much as matter that matters as what happens within us. I know my own, my own know me. The sheep hear my voice and they follow me. In the midst of the storms that you might be facing or that you will face in the future, I pray you can hear Jesus, the good shepherd who knows you and loves you, that you can hear his voice saying to you, peace, be still, for God is greater than any storm you will ever face. Amen. I invite you to stand and let's join together.